<laughs> uh, next up is ZP. We have Will and Eric, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. So, here you go. It's not how I was expecting that story to end. It's a happier ending than expected. Um, so, I'm Eric, and this is Will from Sea Geek Live Events. Um, if you're at a music tech team, uh, event, I'm sure you've been stymied by sold out tickets before and ended up on stuff of frustrated at the ridiculously high prices. Um, what we're trying to do is take all of the inventory on the internet, that's not just of uh, tons, tons more secondary markets, individual brokers, and we're trying to put that in one place so you can very quickly search it and find the best deal. Um, so we started off because like stadiums are huge, the quality of the seat varies a lot, and we were able to do a lot around, you know, a seat might be 100 bucks, but behind home plate, or it might be 30 bucks, but up in the nosebleeds. You might not care so much about price, but about quality of the seat versus the price. Um, recently, we've really wanted to focus on music because you know it's a it's a very different experience. There's a lot of general admission shows. Um, you know, you don't have that one team that you follow that's there 80 times during the year. You've got 100 bands you like that are around once or twice a year. Um, so, to that effect, we we built into the next version of our iPhone app, which unfortunately not the story yet, thanks to Apple, but uh, here's a quick demo, uh, an exploration feature uh, that you will. So basically what this does is it takes a look at, in your location, what are the most popular events in your area uh, that we think you might like you know, tonight, the next couple of days. Um, you might like the Further Festival. And basically what we do here is we show you, for this performer, you know, where can you go see them in the next couple of days in your area. And then we start showing you stuff that's similar to, to further. Um, so, I don't know, Will, whatever you uh, want to see, go for it. So yeah, and we continue this experience. And basically what, what this allowed us to do was replicate a feature on our site, which was an event calendar that you, know, you logged in to um, see upcoming events and you would put in a bunch of preferences. And it was like a very long sign up, long process before you got to recommendations. This is you don't sign in, you just go to the app, start looking at stuff that's interesting, you you know start drilling down through artists, and it uses a recommendation algorithm to figure out, you know, given what you've looked at so far, what else might you want to see. Um, so now that you've got you got some shows that you might want to go to, you can just hit the event and get to sort of our classic interactive seating map with something we call deal score. And deal score is an algorithm that tries to basically predict what a ticket should cost based on secondary sales and look at how much it does cost and tell you if you're getting a good deal or not. Um, and we figure, you know, if you want to go see a show, you're going to care a lot about where the ticket is in addition to how much it costs. Uh, something we, we're adding in the next version of the app, which can be big, is, you know, something like this might be sold out, but for a lot smaller GA shows, you might be able to get tickets on the primary market and maybe that's the best deal. And something that we don't want to be is just a secondary search engine. We want all the inventory, you know, anywhere on the internet. So, yeah, you can pop up the event info and then get a link to Ticketmaster um, or, you know, whoever it happens to be, Ticketfly, uh, a couple others on the way. Yeah, Ticketmaster is going to be a horrible experience and there's not going to be any available. Forget that. <laughs> so yeah, those are the, uh, the main music-related features. And then obviously the other flow sort of through our app is just you know, go search for a show that you want. But we thought the uh, the exploration feature would be cool to show off today. Yeah, because we can get the uh, upcoming events here. Anything anyone wants to see? Walk them all like all like that. <laughs> okay, so there are no tickets, but if you check here, they'll have a and this link will. Yeah, so sometimes with the smaller shows, the the opposite problem happens where the secondary market is nothing, and you gotta go to the primary market. So we want to make sure we got all the bases covered. You've all probably seen a Ticketmaster checkout page. It's not very nice, so. Yes, that's pretty much it. So in this case, this is it, it's ticket by ticket web, but we, we yeah. pull that in and you can check and see on the power box office for still tickets there. Which I think there are 
you're a walking human. <laughs> yeah, so any questions? So is your business model that you get some percentage cut of the ticket sales? Yeah, exactly. So it's basically an affiliate model, but the user never pays more for going through CD. Okay, so with that, I mean, when you have this sort of you're saying this is a good deal or this is a bad deal, isn't the incentive then for you to have more of saying it's a good deal? Because since you get a percentage cut, then you would want to have more ticket sales. So you would want to skew it more towards this is a good deal? Or is it relative to the other deals? Like how, how would the algorithm work? Oh, so that's actually a good question because it speaks to something we, we changed about a year ago, probably now. Um, basically, deal score, as we call it, used to be per event. So there was always a hundred and there was always a zero deal. And then we would just relatively order tickets in there. But now deal score has, you know, about a year ago become an absolute deal score, as we call it. So you might go to an event and there's just not a deal above 60. Just because, you know, based on what we've seen so far in the secondary market, there, there literally are no good deals. Um, so we were a little fearful to, to push that out that maybe people stop buying tickets, but it's been all right so far. But yeah, we, we try to be completely sort of honest about what is actually a good deal. This is more of a curiosity question on where you're getting your data. Because it's at Fish with Paige and Mike and Trey. Right. Why didn't it just, just say Fish? Because I mean, those are the three that didn't list John Fishman. Those are the three members of the band. So I'm just, I'm just really curious more than anything. Are you all scraping data from somewhere? Or jump yeah, so there? actually, yeah, basically, we, we scrape a ton of sources for permits. You know, um, generally, the bigger stuff is better because people care to keep the data clean but sometimes it's not perfect. Um, but yeah, tons of event catalogs from all these secondary markets and then a bunch of primary markets as well. So somebody else had them all? Most likely. Okay. <laughs> Though we can curate it, so we can go through that. Speaking of scraping, um, I've had a little experience trying to do this with Ticketmaster. Have you run into any problems where they block you or well, fortunately, yeah, we have a, have a deal with them? Or? Yeah, we have a good relationship with them where they basically let us uh, link to them. They unfortunately will not let us show their inventory yet, uh, which would be obviously way better to put it side by side with secondary. So we have to just link to their page, which is not ideal. But. Uh, what's the ratio of tickets bought through the iPhone app versus your website? Um, the Jack. 15 to 1. 15 to 1. Did you hear that 15 to 1? More on the iPhone? No, 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 far more on the web. So we've been on the web for about three and a half years and on the iPhone for six months or so. Um, and then this will be version 1.1, which hopefully will come out this week. Heck on Apple's. Yeah. All right, well, thanks again. Oh, sorry, one more. Do you guys have any user-related features? Like, can I save a profile and save info to the app? Or just... So on the web, we have all that stuff. And we the, the first version of the app, we just wanted to do interactive maps. And we were the first to do that. And they're by far the best maps on mobile. Um, in version 1.1, we really wanted to get primary on there and this explore feature. And then probably we'll do iPad next and then start to do the user stuff like tracking events, uh, tracking performers, and getting alerts for good deals. Thanks, guys. OK, one more question. Oh, okay. One more, sorry. You thought about <laughs> sorry. making that list of artists playable? So if I'm looking for like artists in near me and haven't heard of them, I can play them. Not. Yeah, that's, that's certainly a good idea, and I will use this to plug our Spotify app, um, which is basically the same format but playable through Spotify, um, which gives you nice, easy access to full length tracks and stuff. So you could probably do something with YouTube, but it'd be a little tougher. But, yeah. We have our uh, seat reviews, so if you zoom in on your maps, you know, Facebook generated type thing where they can say this is a great seat or this is an obstructed view, which a lot of <coughs> venues would say. Right, yeah, we don't have any actual. Um, like text content. Uh, one problem with the secondary market is the individual seat is often not listed, just the row and session. So what we do, you know, when possible, is show a view from seat image, um, which is like literally just someone went around the camera and took the picture, which doesn't get you, you know, sometimes just one seat that's obstructed. Unfortunately, we don't have enough granularity to show that. I guess Will's point about the view from seat. Um, well, I'm more curious. Uh, I see that the maps are very high quality. Are you, do you have guys on staff like to draw the maps for each venue? Or yeah, so we basically have a, a pretty 
mature sort of data collection and then map drawing process, and we've got thousands of maps now. Okay, awesome. Cool, cool. thanks. Good job. Okay. All right, so um, 